Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning. Welcome to Daily Fountain Devotional. I invite you to bring your friends, family uh, together so that we will together uh, search out scriptures to help us for the day. Um, today we're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 from verse 15 to 26. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 15 to 26. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for the gift of this day. And in the troubles and trials of the world around us, we ask you to help us to be calm in your presence. We ask your Holy Spirit to keep our hearts still to listen to you, that in your peace we may be fed, nourished, strengthened and encouraged to face the day whatever comes because we know that in your nourishment we will receive victory we will receive success and we will overcome so we pray bless us in this devotion through jesus christ our lord amen acts chapter 15 verse 15 to 26 in those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and was allotted his share in the ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called, in their own language, Akel Dama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two. Joseph called Basabas, who was also called Justus, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship for which Judas turned aside to go his own place and they cast lots for them and the lot fell on Matthias and he was numbered with the 11 apostles this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God the beginning of the church um, has a lot of uh, interesting episodes and Luke the writer of the Acts of the Apostles is trying to portray to us the, the, the very nature of the beginning of the church with its human participants whom God had chosen through Jesus Christ and how this church was established on a firm foundation 
And one of the earliest casualties of this foundation is Judas, whom we know as Judas Iscariot. Uh, Peter tries to give us a summary of what actually happened. Peter sold Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver. Peter betrayed Jesus Christ and it was Judas that was used as an instrument of betrayal of Christ leading to his death. So out of the 12, the number that Jesus had chosen representing the new Israel, one is missing. And that one needed to be replaced. And what Luke gives us is a pattern of a peaceful election of replacement, a peaceful uh, selection of someone to take the place of Judas. And this pattern is fantastic because with our democracy, uh, elections don't tend to end well. But we see a biblical pattern of a peaceful election. And I think we will do well as families and as churches to learn from that. So what do we learn first of all? Number one is that Judas, out of greed, uh, out of ambition, was willing to sacrifice his eternal place of leadership with God and to sell it for money. I think we must be careful with that first lesson that we do not allow money, the pursuit of money to take over our eternal place in the kingdom of God. We cannot replace our eternal place with money. That will be a colossal mistake. That will be a, an eternal mistake. And Judas did. So we should learn from that. Because Peter now says, For he was numbered among us, was allotted his share in this ministry. But he threw away the ministry for money. He sold the ministry for money. But his end also, we are told, he fell headlong, burst open in the middle, and his bowels gushed out. So he, he hung himself. That was his choice. Judas could have repented, but he was so caught up with bitterness that he could not even give himself the chance to repent. We must be careful with envy and bitterness taking root in our hearts because they can completely block out any opportunities in our hearts of repentance. The thing we must throw out from our hearts is envy and bitterness because they can cause us to lose sight of opportunities of turning back to God. So in times of crisis, whatever the temptations must, may be, we must look at an opportunity with God, not like Judas, for whom bitterness and envy closed his eyes and he was lost. So Judas was, lost his place in ministry. But the second thing is that Judas needed to be replaced because the scriptures foresaw it and Peter uh, quoted it. And here verse 20 and 21. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his place. You see, the, the, the work that God has put for each one of us, only I and you can do it. When God created us in this life, he gave to each one of us blessings and gifts and talents so that in Christ we may participate in kingdom issues. 
But if we, like Judas, allow greed, envy, and bitterness to take root in our hearts, and we block off the chance of repentance, the second lesson is God's work cannot be stopped. It can't be stopped. The psalmist says, his place, let another take. So the second lesson is, if you refuse to do God's work, God will replace you with somebody, play, somebody else. So when God has blessed you financially, when God has blessed you intellectually, when God has blessed you with talents and gifts and all manner of things with which to enhance the work of the kingdom and you choose to bluff God and turn away and for greed or envy or for whatever reason you choose to turn away, be careful because your place, somebody else will take. And Judas, even though he was an apostle, even though he participated in the healing and evangelism and miracles, but once he turned his back on God, his place was taken over by another. And if there's any prayer you need to pray today, this morning is to say, Lord, my place, another will not take. You must humble yourself. You must be willing to serve. You must be willing to sacrifice so that your place, no one will take. You must be open when God shows you your mistakes for you to repent and turn to Christ and turn to God and turn to the Holy Spirit so that your place no one will take. But if you choose to harden your heart, believe me, your place someone will take. And let me quickly warn that it is not like Judas that when your place is going to be taken, you will die and your bowels will gush out. No, there are times you choose to bluff God and God will take your place and give it to another. Uh, Isaiah was still alive when uh, God said, whom shall I send? Fortunately for Isaiah, he repented and God forgave him and his place no one took. So you could still be alive, you may not be dead, but because you bluff God, because your heart is full of envy, because your heart is full of jealousy, because your heart is full of greed, God will give your place to another person. So we should learn that lesson. But the last lesson is the fact that an election held and justice uh, was put forward and Barnabas was put forward. And the criteria was set very clearly. First of all, whoever we're going to elect must be someone who has been with us these three years, who saw the miracles of Jesus, who also saw the death, and who also participated and saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So for every walk at home, in the office, in school, anywhere, in the workshops, in the market, uh, criteria must be set and the necessity for criteria is so that we don't lower the standards so that there be a standard so that there be no mediocrity uh, in service because the best thing you can ever do is to give quality service any day anytime at home when you are serving cooking sweeping washing or in the office when you're doing your job or in school when you're teaching or learning or in the market when you're selling, sell quality things. But that quality assurance is gotten from a standard. So we must have standards as Christians. We must have standards as a church. We must have standards as family. We must have standards as individuals never to fall below standard. Keeping a standard is what causes and propels excellence in all service, in all presentations. And so there's a standard here set, and then the ballots was cast. Matthias was chosen, very peaceful, and the church survived. My friends, I'd like you to ask yourself, if you were justice, what would you do? You probably would go around to your townspeople and say, well, it's because I'm not from the same town. No, God forbid. Justice didn't do that because the greater good is the survival of the church, the body of Christ. Let us always look at the greater good and make our sacrifices. Matthias was chosen. Justice wasn't. We never heard of any crisis after that. We accepted the will of God for the sake of the greater good, for the sake of the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the growth of the gospel. And this is how the early church survived. Ordinary people, accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior in their lives, accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior 
over their circumstances, accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior in all that they do. They never lose sight of Jesus' presence, Jesus' leadership, and Jesus' authority all the time. So what have we learned this morning? We've learned that Judas fell because of his greed, envy, and jealousy. He refused to repent of those things. But we also learned that because of those things and his refusal to repent, his place, someone took. Matthias was chosen. And we learned also the third thing, the process of choosing Matthias. Everybody sought only the greater good. May we seek the greater good for our families, for the church of God, and for the society, and follow the principles that has been laid for us in scripture. Let us pray. Lord, bless your word into our hearts and into our lives. That like the early Christians, we may seek to build your kingdom and build our families and build our communities where Jesus is Lord at all times. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching and God bless. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.